showing in the center, uh, I'm using this transformer. But unlike the Faraday and Tesla, which use the sine wave voltage to drive it and the resultant sine wave current in the primary and secondary, I'm now driving this voltage with the square wave voltage and looking at the two quantities. Integral or square wave voltage, according to Faraday's uh, law, becomes a current a flux in a, in a wind, a flux in a core. Uh, but if I measure a current in a primary and with a smaller, uh, 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 you know, current sense winding or so on, I can have a, uh, observe the current in the, uh, driving the core and I can observe the flux in the core. Now, my standard question is, uh, uh, when I want to challenge you, they both look linear, right? But if I start increasing the uh, magnitude of the drive, and remember the drive is now 50%, positive voltage, negative voltage with a zero, so it's a volt second balance, flux balance. So, but if I increase the drive, then what happens? Oh, you see, one is a linear and the other one is uh, showing the spikes. Which one you think is a, a, a flux and which one is the current? Well, you see the Faraday's law simply says uh, the flux is integral volt seconds. If I drive it with square wave voltage, integral of a square wave is a triangular. No if, buts, and maybes. But uh, because the core has its nonlinear characteristic, the more I drive the core toward the edge of the saturation, the more it will have a, a smaller slope and it will have a current. So this spiky effort here shows that the actual uh, current will be distorted and the flux is uh, no, never distorted, right? And it really reflects uh, that at this point, I'm going into the uh, magnetic characteristics of the core, which is no longer in a linear region of magnetic material, we starting going to saturation. And the more I drive it, the more I get there. And you see the two, one, two, uh, two big points I make. When you have a square wave voltage drive, uh, you have automatic volt seconds. Uh, that is exactly the same what happened with the 60 Hertz transformer. What's happening with the 60 Hertz transformer? Positive sine wave, uh, drives the core in a positive direction and the negative sine wave resets the core back to the origin. So it can periodically uh, be, and the power transfer happens during both positive and negative cycle. And that is not happening with most of these other transformers, which are now claimed to be called transformers, but they don't uh, do that. Example, forward converter, uh, flyback stores all the energy and things like that. Anyway. The point, and this is a square wave uh, voltage drive. So that means you have to make a switching converter such that its transformer, if it is square wave, and especially if it is a not square wave, uh, rectangular drive, that it has a flux balance. And also you have to make sure that it has a chart balance, which is automatic in a transformer 60 Hertz, but in a switching converter, no, that's why uh, I let me just finish this demonstration and see what it's going to show. Input voltage source is the net zero average, no. and we can change it by increasing no. the drive. Yes, can you hear the sound? Yes, <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's beauty. It's, it's beauty. We you hear it, and I don't hear it. <laughs> you know, so, so it's uh, blame it on Zoom, okay? Core. And I don't know why I don't hear it, in but the uh, we, are driving. Uh, we can also change. We can change the duty cycle of the switch. Hello. And these are basically the main uh, parameters that we're changing in the experiment. Now, let us... Uh, look at the picture of the DH loop on another scope. Yeah. Now and if you look change, at it change, on a the speakers, okay. horizontal, we have uh, amplitude and excitation. On a vertical, we have a... Can you hear me? Yes? Okay. What I'm doing now, 
uh, I have two scopes. On one scope, I am looking at a voltage drive and I'm looking at the resulting current and resulting flux in the core. Now, when I put a, a flux as a function of current, I'm using the other scope in the so-called XY coordinates. And of course, what will sh that show? It will show the really BH characteristic of the magnetic material. And you see that high slope. And if I drive it- voltage, And if you look at it on a horizontal, we have a ampertonic excitation. On a vertical, we have a- Okay, so that is, uh, that is one demonstration. And uh, the other is uh, transformer saturation. Let's see here. Can you see that? No. Yeah. Let yes. us now uh, examine in uh, closer details what are the parameters responsible for the saturation in the switching converters and in the magnetic devices in general. First, if we excite a core with a square wave voltage with the identical positive volt seconds and negative volt seconds, we will excite the core flux linkages in one direction shown in red and de-excite it with the same amount and therefore in the steady state we will have the periodic excitation up and down along this linear part of the curve. If we are still in a linear part of the curve, we will uh, have corresponding current to be of the same linear shape. Let us now look at the, what is the main equation. As we see here, the volts per turn that the single device, magnetic device can uh, support. Okay, uh, this is a very famous uh, saturation equation. Now you can see when I was inferring to the fact that we go from uh, 50 Hertz uh, of Tesla and Faraday at the time, and we go now to 50 kilohertz, that is how much higher frequency. It's a thousand times higher frequency. Agree? Yep. Thousand times from 50 Hertz to 50 kilohertz. Switching frequency is now easily done in 50 kilohertz. They're doing useless 500 kilohertz and 5 megahertz, but even at 50 kilohertz, which is above the audio range, so you wouldn't hear it. If you have a frequency uh, from 50 kilohertz, increase a thousand times, what can you do with the cross section? Because a product flux saturation, flux density times the frequency is uh, uh, something that you have to make uh, volts per turn less than this number. So one volt per turn, say five, five volts and five turns, this one volt per turn has to be less than this. That means that uh, you see here that saturation flux density is a constant, say for ferrite is 0.5 Tesla, so it's a fixed, but the product of cross section of the core and product of the frequency at which you're driving is uh, uh, what determines this one volt per turn. So if I increase the frequency from 50 kilohertz to 50 hertz to 50 kilohertz, what is a, uh, how much I uh, reduce a, a size cross section? Thousand times, is that right? And, yeah. and if we have, a, remember this core uh, at 50 kilohertz, that's nothing. Uh, most of ferrite cores can be driven full flux from uh, zero to 300 millitesla in one direction and zero to minus 300 millitesla in the other direction without uh, getting huge core losses. So core losses will be still uh, negligible, but the size will be reduced thousand times. Did we manage to do that? Absolutely not. We are far away from it, far away. And you know what? In the meantime, uh, we did go from, uh, uh, in fact, when I started back in, uh, and I had a couple of my uh, uh, classmates who were doing a PhD at the same time, who are uh, working in the industry and so on, we were all excited and said, oh, all we need to do is go from now 50 Hertz, go to 20 kilohertz and everything will be small size and uh, beautiful. Didn't happen, didn't happen by factor of 100. And not only that, the whole field that I uh, warned back in 1988, 30 years ago, uh, the whole field went bananas, you know, and going to make uh, devices which can switch in um, um, megahertz and now 10 megahertz and uh, talking about 100 megahertz and so on. Did they get anything smaller in size? Absolutely not. All they, all they did is increase the uh, losses and nothing else. They have nothing to show for it. And why? Because the full field 
of power electronics. I'm sorry, that's why I made this uh, uh, cartoon. It went in the wrong direction. It went in the direction that not following to make a true transfer. Uh, you have to make a magnetics in a, a switching converters, which will follow the rules uh, that were set up, except we cannot do what uh, Faraday or uh, Tesla did that automatically when he had a sine wave driven voltage source, he have positive and negative flux, which are automatically uh, volt second balanced or flux balanced. So there is no problem of uh, uh, driving the core in the saturation, as long as the magnitude of that is proportional to the, uh, for a given frequency proportional to the core size. You have to have a core size proportional to that frequency, as you see here, the higher frequency, you can get smaller core size, okay? That's one thing. And the other thing, which is automatic uh, with the uh, secondary side conducting the current, which when reflected the primary is subtracted from and adding to that is fixed magnetizing current, you have an input current, which is just slightly bigger than a output current, reflected output current. And that's uh, the circulating current. Now, you know what the theory is that everybody in power electronics was talking, Dr. Chuk, why are you insisting so much, you know, that it's a AC transformer type? I don't care. Transformer is a two winding on a magnetic core. Yes, provided you know what you're doing and provided you pro you put all the uh, thing around it, switches, capacitors and uh, uh, inductors and transformer in a configuration which will provide flux balance and charge balance. And that's what all the converters in a classical technology don't do that. And I'll show you in a minute why. And I'll show you uh, my initial step. I did four, 45 years ago, my invention of my true converter, which was the first time really uh, applying uh, properly the principles that you needed to do to make a transformer work, okay, uh, in, a, uh, in the right way. And since that time, I hopefully have some chance to introduce you to some new structures which uh, uh, break new ground. And in fact, uh, my current work is uh, uh, dramatically changing uh, in the sense that uh, after so many years, I figured out how to get uh, you know proper way of transformer such that we can truly get uh, 50 or 100 times reduction in the size of magnetic core. It's still at 100 kilohertz which is the only operating frequency we, we could use. Then likewise, uh, uh, there are other applications. So the, the main thing is we need to change system, not devices. And the whole uh, uh, power electronics field was driven in the wrong direction for last 50 years, driven in making new devices and trying to justify their use by using the outdated uh, obsolete technology of system which shouldn't should have long time not even ever used it, but it, it ended up being used anyway. So uh, the other uh, uh, area that I'm focusing on, and I hopefully show you today, is um, the uh, area of uh, uh, everybody now needs uh, uh, microprocessors and need to drive them at one volt and 100 amp or 800 amps current. Again, this whole area of system-wise is totally, uh, how you say, going sideways because instead of making one converter which does that and it's small and doesn't have a magnetics, it actually, it has automatic, uh, uh, how you say, drive. Uh, they are now using 12 of these, not only one buck converter, which I proved that is useless, but they use 12 buck converters in parallel and now worst, the latest invention that was made by some of the companies not to mention is to replace these inductors with the 12 transformers, you know, so, so this have boondoggle uh, and of course requires a capacitor which are 100 times more than necessary. So, and you know, how do you, uh, the problem is that the present uh, field of power electronics, people who are in it, they think let's IC design. The more devices you use, the more capacitors and more inductances, the better it is. Absolutely not. Power conversion is just opposite. You need to do uh, uh, as much as you can with as little that, uh, uh, devices that, that you can use very efficiently. Anyway, so this is a point that I show this. It has to be less than this quantity given here, which is directly proportional to reducing uh, the core. So 
the silicon structure by a factor of two or four to the core or and design here by reducing the volts voltage drive uh, by reducing the voltage drive we can essentially reduce the flux excitation in the core and uh, avoid the saturation just like uh, by increasing again and get out of the nonlinear region so you see what i showed uh, by increasing the frequency you are reducing the uh, how you say uh, you're reducing the the uh, ripple reducing the current and reducing the flux so that's the point higher the frequency smaller the flux proportional to it but you know we now go from 50 kilohertz to 50 hertz to 50 kilohertz, thousand times increase, and we get a two times smaller size. We are doing something wrong, okay? Clearly. All right, let's uh, uh, stop there and let me move to the other subject, uh, which is really key.